Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India learners to the another session of international business management i am dr manisha goswami assistant professor at institute of business management glu university mathura today we are going to begin with lecture number 17 and this lecture is regarding international marketing management so far we had discussed international financial management now we are heading towards international marketing management let's quickly look at what we did in our previous lecture in the previous lecture we talk about the various factors affecting the mnc's profit right and what different activities or the course of action mnc's need to adopt in order to ensure these hurdles to get over functions were also discussed like investment decisions were discussed financing decisions were discussed dividend decision and liquidity decisions were discussed in the previous lecture and even we get to know about the various common and uh, behavioral biases of the investors in the forex market today we will be talking about the international market and how marketing management can be performed from the global perspective so for that there are certain things which we will be focusing upon in today's lecture the learning objective is to explain the initial steps involved in marketing strategy describe the product strategy third learning objective is to examine how to choose distribution strategy discuss the communication strategy explain the pricing strategy analyze the factors influencing the pricing strategy when it comes to a global market so we will be covering these different topics in today's lecture let's get started let's have an overview why there was a need of international marketing management at all so let's look at the understanding from the perspective of globalization the global economic integration and liberal economic policy have compelled domestic firm to compete with international firm in the domestic market because of the globalization what become possible every next company started moving from their home country to the host country as because of their movement from the host to the host country from their home country compel them to understand the various international marketing strategies because the kind of strategy of marketing they are using in their home country may not be exactly replicable in the host country so for that you need to assess and understand the different techniques required to market your product in the international market with globalization of market understanding of international marketing is considered to be inevitable for the success of operation in domestic as well as international market in order to remain domestically competitive a firm need to be internationally competitive so for making your firm to be domestically competitive and when you are an mnc you have to ensure that whatever the investments you have put in the host country or the foreign country has to be internationally accepted has to be internationally competitive because uh, your money is invested over there if you are not able to do well in the international market your domestic business is also going to fumble if your in, your domestic business is also going to suffer because of that your image is also going to get suffer international marketing is defined as marketing across the border and between one more than one nation when you cross your border and start marketing marketing your product either you just acting as an exporter in that case also international marketing is taking place it is not at all necessary that you need to get into fdi then only international marketing will take place even when you are an international company you are just marketing your product in the foreign country you are manufacturing your products in your home country and you are exporting it to the international market with one more than one country then it is going to be considered to be as a international marketing you are from india and apart from dealing in the indian market you start exporting your product to the international market be it nepal bhutan bangladesh even your neighbor country you are marketing then it is going to be a part of the international marketing and you need to have a fair understanding of the concepts and techniques of international marketing management to be successful in the international market 
internal market, international marketing aim to satisfy global customer needs for more efficiently than the competitors. Whatever the different international marketing techniques you are going to use, the whole sole perspective is to satisfy the customer. You are doing marketing for the international market. Why you are marketing for the international market? Why? Because you want the customer. And as you want the customer, you just need to satisfy them. Then only you will be able to get the loyalty or the you, you, the, you will be able to get the sales from the foreign market. If you are not able to satisfy the customer, if you are not able to convince the customer, you are not able to make the customer understand that how useful your product would be for them. Apart from all the list of product which is available already to them, why your product to be buy, why your product to be purchased. If you make the customer understand the reason why, you will be able to get the loyalty of the customer. So for all such kind of bringing the loyalty from the customer, you need to have a fair understanding of international marketing. Now let's proceed together further to the various marketing strategies and try to see what marketing strategies are, what international marketing mix are. The first step in marketing strategy is always about identifying the potential market. The first thing which comes in the mind when you are going to market your product, you have to figure out which particular market I should target. So that means you need to find out which particular country is going to be the best country to start with. Market differ, differ from each other in terms of the geographical condition, socio-cultural conditions, economic conditions and the legal environment. Everything is going to different, right? Be it they are going to be your neighbor country, they might be behaving quite similar to you, but still there will be some or the other differences which you need to cater and address and respect those differences and bring the required changes in your marketing. If you don't give respect to those gaps, those differences in your neighbor country culture, in your neighbor country politics system or the legal system, if you are not giving e respect to those changes or the deviations or the variations, you are not going to survive and sustain in the international market. So one thing which is very important for international marketing that you have to give respect to the various changes which are prevailing in the foreign market. It can be related to the culture, the traditions, rituals, which may seem to be very trivial for you. Right, you being maybe from the developed nations, certain, certain rituals or the custom the developing countries or the underdeveloped countries might be following. And if you consider, that, consider those rituals and the tradition as trivial things and you find that those people are very orthodox and with this perspective if you are entering into the host country of the developing or the underdeveloped nation, you won't be able to survive and sustain. So one thing which is very important when you are selecting a potential market, you have to give respect to the deviations, to the various differences which are prevailing in the geographical distance, socio culture, economical and legal environment. Disparity in income, income of elasticity of demand, degree of concentration of income, wealth in the country also influence the variation in the market. So you have to find out the segment of your market, right? Which particular segment to be catered, the, right? You can have a classification on the basis of the income earning capacity of the customer. Thus, it is a challenge to identify the potential market, right? Let's look at certain steps which was given by Rockman Hoggetts in 2002 and he has framed certain essential steps, basically the six different steps he had figured out in terms of the selection of the market. Let's try to explore these six different steps in order to make you understand how any company or how any MNC can find or select a particular host country as a potential market to enter into. So as per Rogman and Hoggetts and as per his research in 2002, what he stated that identify the demand of the product in the market. When you are in, in the verge of selecting the market, the first thing that you should go, you should go for finding the correct market. You should find the correct ma market on the basis of the demand. So you need to assess whether there is a potential demand in the market or not. Is there any latent need of the customer which I can fulfill with the product which I am manufacturing in my home country? So you have to figure out the latent need and the demand of the customer. On the basis of that, you will be moving ahead. 
Then the next step which comes examine the market in terms of the level of the income, interest rate, inflation, expected rate of returns on investment. So if you able to figure out that particular country is having some potential, the com particular country is having certain demand may not be raising today because they do not have that demand currently, they might be having a latent demand which will be later on explored when I will be uh, launching a product in the market. So this may be the possibility, there are lot many people who have a need of certain product but they couldn't demand for it because they don't know whether the particular solution is there in the market or not. So there may be a latent demand of a product so this may be very much possible. So if you able to find out such market where the latent demand is there or absolute demand is there you need to move to the next level that identifying the income level. Will they be able to pay me the amount? because I will be selling a product in that country. So if I will be selling a product, I will be charging certain thing amount, certain amount from my customer, potential customer. So what their income capacity is, I need to figure this out. I need to also see the interest rate, inflation rate prevailing in the country and when I will be able to get or reach economy of scale or when I will be able to get the break even point in the country on the basis of return on investment calculation, the time value of money, payback period or the capital budgeting I am going to undergo in order to find out by when I will be able to get the returns on whatever the investment I will be putting in the country. The next step involve screen the market in terms of political risk and other relevant factors, right. So they, when you are moving from your home country to the host country, entire different macro environment you will be exposed to, your internal environment is also going to be little altered and modified. So you have to have a fair understanding of analyzing the political risk prevailing over there. You need to see the political system, you need to see their philosophy, their ideology and on the basis of which if there are some attached political risks to it, you also have to find out is the political environment is stable or not, you are going to question, you are going to do the deep scanning of the macro environment of the host country in order to get to know what are the list of the opportunities and what are the list of the threats. If the threat list is quite heavy and bulky and you don't have sufficient strength to match with those threats then don't take a chance or don't dare to enter into such host country because the possibilities of your failure will be more. So this particular third step is going to make you aware about the list of opportunities and the list of threats and the, when there are the list of opportunities are ample and you have ample strength with you to maximize them then don't stop yourself explore the foreign market and go for your expansion strategies. Next step comes access whether the product is socially and culturally acceptable in the socio-cultural environment. That's very important when you are entering into any country you have to see the product is going to be socially culturally acceptable. It should not be unacceptable to, or it should not hurt anybody's sentiments when you are launching a product in the host country. Say for example in recent uh, in the recent year Amazon what they did the some of the products of Amazon particularly the sleepers uh, they were launching in the Amazon website is having the figures and impression of RDTs Lord Ganesha were imprint on the sleepers uh, were imprint on the dress which was not at all acceptable to the Indian culture we worship Lord Ganesha and they uh, and if you are trying to imprint the pictures of Lord Ganesha over the sleepers over the dress this is absolutely beyond our culture we couldn't accept and we are going to absolutely raise our voice and boycott the company from the country and they later uh, Jeff Bezos CEO of uh, the Amazon company even apologized and they took away such products from the market. So you have to see what kind of product you are launching in the market and how it is going to affect the culture. You should not you should not hurt anybody's sentiments. You should not hurt anybody's culture and rituals. So this is what the companies are trying to get to know well in advance. And if company fail, they lose their market image. They lose the trust from the customer. For next step, which comes under it, further screen the intensity of competition existing in the market right next which you need to see the level of the competition if competition is quite high it is going to be very difficult for you initially to set, uh, penetrate in the market because your competitors must be already enjoying economy of scale so they are quickly going to reduce the price and which is going to be a cutthroat competition for you to survive in that host competition when you are selecting a particular market to find out whether the red ocean strategies are required or the blue ocean strategies are required or the white ocean strategies are required to enter into the host country. 
all above steps on the spot study of the market is undertaken as a final step because these all are just the prerequisites which you need to go for but every day you have to make your fresh analysis you cannot say that i have done my analysis now i am going to blindly follow it this is not going to pave your way because environment is so dynamic it's ever changing and the only certain thing about environment is ever changing it's uncertain that you can say the only certain thing about environment is highly uncertain so if environment is so uncertain you cannot rely on your past study you cannot rely on your past research maybe a research which you completed a year before or six months before may become obsolete because of certain advancement or certain changes which took place in the political environment or certain things which took place because of the biological war which is going on right so you have to get into some on spot studies of the market so these were the certain steps which were given by Rockman Hoggets in 2002 for the selection of the market. Now let's proceed to the international marketing mix and before in proceeding to the international marketing mix, let's try to understand how market is going to be segmented. Okay. That you can have a classified approach. You have to find out which particular segment of the entire market I will be targeting and once you have this classification in the mind, you can alter and adjust your pricing, you can alter and adjust your promotion techniques, you can adjust and alter your product launching time and date, right? So market segmentation has to be done in a advance in order to ensure which particular segment I am going to cater and you can closely observe the behavior of those segment of the customer so that you can adapt your product as per their taste and preferences. So once market are identified, the firm has to decide the market segment. Market segmentation refers to dividing of market into homogeneous group, right? Because the market is highly heterogeneous. When it comes to international business, it is going to be highly heterogeneous. So if it is highly heterogeneous, what you need to do? You need to create the small segments in the market. And those small segments are going to make you understand that this particular group of the customer are going to behave in this manner a group of the customer is going to behave in this manner then you have a specific approach for these two different kind of the customers international market can be divided on the basis of the geography geography demographic factors and the psychographic profile of the customer can be a factor on the basis of which you can create a divide in the market and have a specific approach a more customized approach towards the customer on the basis of the, their behavior in terms of the profile Next is the entry mode decision. Once you have selected the market, you have a fair idea whom I am going to target. My youth is my segment, right? Aging from 16 years to uh, 20 years, I am going to target. So if you have such a specification, now you have to decide how I am going to enter into the host market, right? I should go for FDI for sure because you will you are into the production of goods and services are you going for the fdi or you are looking for some export and import per kind of the business you are in you are going to continue to be international company you will be doing the production in your home country and only the final product will be exported to the host country so you have to decide that whether i am going to put my fdi that means i am going to invest in the foreign country by having my wholly owned subsidiaries, my branch unit or through some joint venture acquisition, takeover, uh, strategic alliance, what there are different brownfield investment strategies also with which particular strategy I should use is going to be the answer to be given at this point of the stage of your analysis. So entry mode are international mechanism by which company product service are made available in the international market. So you can go for FDI or you can go for export and import, right? So if you are going for FDI, again, three question comes in the mind, whether to go for greenfield investment or greenfield development or brownfield investment. So if you are looking for some sort of the rebates from the government, always advisable to go for greenfield development because in, green, in case you are investing your money in special economic zone area or export processing zone area government is going to give you rebate and relaxation because you are helping the government to develop the countryside of the country so that that has to be framed out and figured out on the basis of your availability of fund or the capital with you the size of the market should be determined before entering into the market undoubtedly because if the size of the market is not sufficient enough then or don't dare to put your 
heavy uh, capital in the host market then it is always advisable initially go for export and if you able to get the fair idea that there is a significant market in the host country then go for the proper investment there in the form of the FDI. So your stage of globalization could start from the domestic company to international company and from international then you can move to the multinational company. The next important stage of uh, identifying the market equally comes the estimation of the demand because in the previous stage when you are trying to enter into the market you are also having a thought in the mind that what is the size of the market. So how you are going to determine the size of the market is on the basis of the estimation of the demand. You have to figure out the income elasticity of the demand. Right, so demand for the product may change over the period of the time that goes without saying that for today you might be demanding for certain product, tomorrow you might get some better alternative and you switch your, your, your requirement towards that brand, that's, that's very obvious and that's, that's how the market behaves. But uh, the per capita income register growth in the country, it will be a result into greater consumption. Another very important aspect which can help you to estimate the demand is the income per capita income. If a particular country is having a higher per capita income for sure there will be the higher consumption. Right? There was a study in terms of estimation of the demand what they try to figure out. They try to figure out three things when they are estimating the demand. They are trying to figure out the size of the economy. They try to figure out the intensity right? and they try to figure out the consumption. So the size, size of the economy, economy size is talking about the size of the population and economic intensity is talking about the per capita income, their paying capacity, right? And the consumption is coming from the income elasticity of the demand, right? So if the firm enjoy monopolistic position, there is no need of such identification of the market share. But if the company is not enjoying the monopoly, that means there are various buy, there are various sellers are there in the market. That means you are not having a monopolistic position. Then you need to undergo the specification or identification of economic size, intensity, and the consumption, right? And the relationship between rise in per capita income and the demand for the product depend upon the, in the income elasticity of the demand and the degree of concentration of income in the hand of the few people. Right. So uh, the people belonging to the developed nation, they are more open to take the risk, right? They, uh, they are open for uh, experimentation, where in case the people from the low income slab, the, uh, where the people are from developing nation or underdeveloped nation, they prefer to take the or buy the product which are, which are comparatively of less price. So the price sensitivity, sensitivity is going to arise on the basis of the economy of the country because economy is coming from the per capita income of the nation. Right? So if people are earning less, obviously they, they will try to make maximum out of the money whatever they will be investing. So they don't want much experimentation in, with their money where in case the people from developed nation the, where the economy is already doing so well, the per capita income of the nation is good. So they are quite experimentative, they, they are okay with new products, they are okay with new features, they can easily switch from one brand to another. Next is the globalization of the market. That is with the advancement in the technology, right? The resultant development in communication, transport, travel has led to the emergence of the global market of standardized product, right? They are focusing on standardized product that they want the product which is or globally available, a standard product. There is no alteration and, and modification as per the taste and preferences. This become possible because of the globalization, right? Communication technology has facilitated emergence of certain tastes and preferences among the consumer in the advanced country as well, right? Uh, nowadays, the people in Europe, US and European country, the people start demanding for the uh, Indian food taste. They have a lot of inclination towards the masala dosa in European country and the USA people even they are liking the chicken tikka over there, right? Where in case in India there is a shift in the taste, the, instead of eating masala dosa more the way they used to eat in India, they start demanding for pizza and burger. So such kind of the change in the taste and preferences become possible because of the globalization. However, the cultural economic difference still persists among the nation and they act as a constraint in the globalization of the market. Now let's look at the essential aspects of international marketing mix. Under the international marketing mix, the first area of concern is the product strategy. 
product is like in the, the bundle of the attributes initially the product is having a core value right certain products are having certain products are purchased for some essential core values right and then from the core values that moves to the uh, the generic product then comes to the expected product and then there is a augmented product and then finally is an R&D part that is a potential product. By and large, we can divide the product in three different stages, a core product, a packaging product and an augmented product. In a core product, we are expecting certain essentials or the basic services from the product. Right? If you are buying a mobile phone, the core expectation from a mobile phone is proper incoming and outgoing of a call, proper call quality is should be there, messaging can be done, internet can be served, it's basic photography can be done. That is the very core thing which you are expecting from a mobile phone. Then there should be a proper packaging of the mobile phone, there should be some good freebies to be attached to it. That is going to be the part of your augmented, that you are expecting something extra apart from the basic essential things, right? So when you start expecting something extra is going to be the part of the augment. Here you are asking for the guarantee, warranty, after sale services, right? In case of a packaging, you are focusing on these are the uh, area which is going to come under the packaging. This is what you are expecting and the core and the generic thing is your core components. So under the packaging con component that is an expected component, you are focusing on what? You are focusing on design, you are focusing on the quality of the product, you are focusing on the proper packaging of the product, you are focusing on branding of the product and some related attributes. Here in this case, you are focusing on guarantee, warranty and after sale services. Where in this case of the generic and the core product, you are expecting the some core benefits, core benefits provided by the product. Those core benefits, the reason why, we, why you are making a decision of buying a mobile phone, right? You are buying a mobile phone to make proper calls, to receive call, the calling quality should be good, network services should be good in that mobile phone, the catching of the network should be good, right? The basic photographies should be there. So that becomes a core value or why you are buying a product. But when you move a little ahead that is an expected or the packaging component of the product, here you start focusing on the sleek look of the product. The mobile should be very sleek, should look trendy, right? There should be some extra the specified the qualities are very sharpened as compared to other product the packaging is very attractive and the brand is also like iphone is preferred right oneplus is preferred over micromax so so the branding is also going to be an aspiration for the person to go for higher brand products and this gives the confidence while carrying a certain product in the market there is the augmented product augmented product that you all look for some guarantee warranty you need certain support even after purchasing a product it should not be like that i spend it 50000 rupees and there is no support from the retailer or the company then you look for some guarantee warranty you need certain support you need certain after sale services then move to the then the next part is the potential product you always have expectation from a company the next time they will come up with some more advanced feature like Apple is coming up with every year advanced feature on in the month of September of every year they are coming with advanced feature that is a potential product what next is going to come and for this they have to invest heavily into R&D research and development the scientists are involved in art order to identify what different next features we are going to come up in the market so this is about the product attribute so you have to find out which particular product attribute as product attributes are the bundle of the attributes which you are offering to 
your customer. So you have to see whether I have to focus on the core values or I should focus on expected values or I should focus on augmented values or I should develop some new products on the new features, right? So you have to question yourself when you are moving to the international market and see what kind of the competition level is there on the basis of which you are going to create the difference in the market. Say for example, there are a lot of sellers of the product which you are offering in the market. Then for sure, you have to create the difference in the market on the basis of the expected or the packaging component. Right. So, we can say there are three important components of the product there one is the core component, second is your packaging component and the third one is your augmented component. So, when there is a huge competition in the market, you have to focus on packaging component. These are the component going to help you to create the difference in the market, right? You can change the design, you can change the quality, you can change the packaging, you can further uh, strengthen the image of the brand in the market. You try to position your brand more in the market through more of advertisement, through more of promotion techniques, through hiring brand ambassador so that you your brand get positioned in your mind. Whenever you think of a mobile, you just get one idea only Apple or OnePlus, right? You don't have second other thought. That is how the people try to brand their product in the market, position their image in the market. What brands are? Brand are actually the name, sign, symbol of a particular company which you which clicks in the mind when you see something similar to it, right? Cultural difference has to be taken into consideration because if you are trying to launch a product which is against the culture of that country, then it is going to be a lot of difficulty for you to survive and sustain, right? So you need to see the culture of prevailing in the country and on that basis, you have to have the idea of going for standard product or for adapted, adapted product, McDonald's, pizza were trying lot of difficulties and they undergo that how to maintain the standardized product with slight and minute adaptation of the product as far as the Indian market is concerned. As in India, they don't offer beef and pork. Right. Where in other, case, other countries, they are easily offering the beef burger and the pork burger, but in India, they are understanding the importance of local responsiveness pressure and they have altered the product, they stop the supply of it, the rest of the things are similar. Economic difference have also been to be taken into consideration The developed countries are more open for costly products, whereas the developing countries and underdeveloped countries, they usually don't prefer costly products because they are struggling hard to survive in terms of the earning, right? They, they have a very hard earned money. So if they will be spending so easily on experimentation, they will be a difficult to, to draw the benefit out of the investment they made. So they usually prefer to uh, usually try to show the price sensitive market. So you need to see the economic differences prevailing in different nations, whether it's a developed nation, you don't have to worry about the price, even it is a developing or underdeveloped nation, you need to be conscious and you need to justify the price of your product. And uh, on the basis of the economic differences, you can go for standardize or adaptation, right? If the economic difference is quite high, then better go for a standardized product because there you will be enjoying economy of scale. And when you will be enjoying economy of scale, product will not be costlier for you. So if there is no cultural difference, if people can adopt, then it is advisable to go for the standardized product in developing and de underdeveloped nation because you will already be uh, export into it. So you're going to enjoy economy of scale, it is not going to be costly for you. But if in case you are launching a product in a developing nation with certain alteration or modification, then it is going to be a little costlier for you because you have two pressure. You have a pressure of local responsiveness and a pressure of cost reduction. So it is going to be initially costlier for you. Measurement system. Measurement system is going to be different in different nations. Say for example, in case of a developed uh, country, the measurement uh, in America particularly, measurement uh, uh, skills they use is a, they are using pound, gallon and feet. This is their measurement system. They use different metric system to measure the commodity or the goods and services when, when it comes to US market. When it comes to India market, we are using kg, 
we are using gram, we are using meter, we are using liters. These are the metric system which we are using to measure the quantity here. So, you have to understand the measurement difference also. Packaging and labeling regulation are going to vary from country to country. Say for example, in India, it is very important to have a symbol of vegetarian product or a non-vegetarian product. So, that is at most important here. And when it comes to Arabian country, they want the labeling should be done in Arabian language. They do not want the labeling to be done in English language. So, Arabian country or the Middle East country particularly, they are asking, they, there is a regulation of specification to be mentioned in the packaging in a Arabian language. When it comes to US market, there has to have a specification of expiry date of the product, right? So, uh, this is uh, the difference in the different country as per their packaging and labeling regulations. So, you have you as a manufacturer, maybe from USA, when you are moving to India, you if you are moving into India with some FMCG product, then there has to have a symbol of green or red mark with that means which is indicating it is a vegetarian product or a uh, non-vegetarian product. Even in the, uh, the Middle East area, Arabian area, they, there is a product like halal product. So, they have a symbol for the halal product also, right. So, you have to have the specification on the basis of the labeling and the regulation. Consumer demographics, right, the demographic, the build, the size, the family size is also going to be a parameter of concern when you are taking a call of moving into the international market. So, consumer de demographic, like the physical attribute, the physical characteristics like in case of US people and European people, the particularly the German people are very strongly built, right? they are very, they, their height and size is quite big as compared to Indian customer. So, when you are into apparel industry and you are fixing certain measures of the large size or XL size or the small size or the middle size of the outfits of the suiting and shirting, then you need to be little different for the German people as compared to Indian people. So, that consumer dare demographic has to be taken into consideration. Condition of use, the product where it is going to be used. The product is going to be used in a country where the climatical conditions are very hard, harsh like very cold or it is a place where it is going to be very hot. So, you have to have an understanding that where this product is going to be used, what will be the climatical conditions. So, accordingly you have to maintain the quality of the product and the supply of the product in that country. So, if it is of perishable nature, may get perished if it is going to be imported by the some hot countries, the countries where the temperature goes beyond 30 or 35 degrees Celsius or 40 degrees Celsius, then you have to give cert a certain specification how and when it should be consumed. Your expiry date is going to be different and when it comes to the product of perishable nature where it is a comparatively colder, the temperature remains uh, uh, below 20 degrees Celsius, so the expiry date is going to be comparatively high. Price is also price of the product you are going to set is going to be largely determined by the economy differences. So, what is going to be the price of the product at what rate you are going to launch to the market is also going to be identified and it is largely going to be governed on the basis of the standardization and adaptation of the product. The strategy for building the global brand that means you are going to create a global image of your product in the market and for this you need to bring some acceptance of the product in the market. You have to carry some good image from your home country to the host country. Say for example, Japanese people, Japanese people respect more of the in uh, their Japanese product, right? They have a belief that Japanese product are the superior when it comes to US. So, Japanese people do not like any product or coming from the US market. They prefer to buy Japanese product over US market. So, that kind of the global image is also going to hamper your branding system in the host market. So, you need to find out how you are going to work upon in order to create a good healthy image in the market. Let us move to the next point that is the international marketing mix for the distribution strategies. Here there is uh, there are certain strategies which you need to take care of that is the retail concentration, second is the channel length, third is the channel exclusivity, channel quality. Now, let us talk about first that is Retail, retail system can be a concentrated or it can be a fragmented. That means it is about the retail system. Retail system can be of two type, one is the concentration and second one is the fragmented retail, right? Retail concentration that means only few retailers are there in the market, 
like for example in US Walmart is there Amazon is there right fragmented market like us in India and Japan it's a fragmented market but in our case in India the, it is slightly getting taking or taking a shape of a retail concentration and in the year 2019 government been compelled by the retailers unorganized sector of our country to raise the bar for e-commerce in our country because our, our, they, there is a significant shift of Indian retail system from fragmented to the concentration. So, after getting lot of woos and worries from the retail uh, sector of a country, the unorganized retail sector of a country, government was compelled to make certain clear strict modifications or strict charges for the e-commerce doing business in our country because of which Amazon was badly get affected by it. So, retail concentration that means there is one of few retailers are there and they have captured all unorganized sectors within them they all the small retailers are working for them like walmart like amazon the people are working for them right in case of the fragmented retailer system they are small small retail outlets are there in japan usually promote the retail fragmented system because they want to improve the economy they want to improve the the uh, the income level or the per capita income and they want this is how they are generating the jobs opportunity in their own country Channel, channel length is also one of the reason why you need to have a good distribution strategy. When it comes to a retail concentration, distribution strategy become quite easier for you to do it. When it comes to fragmented, then you have to cater and build the relation with various retailers. So, so from the point of view of the foreign investors or the MNC, retail concentration is usually preferred as compared to the retail fragmented. Next is the channel length, if length of the channel like means you are a manufacturer and there are various intermediaries in between, the length of the channel is quite large. In that case also the distribution strategy is going to be very different. When the channel length is small, the distribution strategies are going to be comparatively easier because there are just few intermediaries in between like the you are a manufacturer, you give it to wholesaler and after the wholesaler it directly goes to the retailer and finally reach to your ultimate customer. That means it is comparatively easier but if there are multiple wholesalers in between if there are multiple retailers in between right then the channel length is kept on increasing if the channel length kept on increasing when it will be reaching to the ultimate customer the price will also be higher and it will be difficult to manage and the relationship with the retailers to make your product more public uh, to make your product more acceptable or to make your product at the top shelf of the retail outlet Channel exclusivity is usually adopted when you try to reduce the unnecessary length involved in between the manufacturer and the final customer. So you try to open your own exclusive outlet so that you make your product at comparatively cheaper rate available to the customer and in, in order to build your more image in the market. So uh, in, in order to improve the quality of the channel, channel exclusivity is used and they try to reduce the length of the channel in order to improve the quality of the channel. Channel is a supply of your goods and services from the manufacturing setup to the ultimate customer. So if the, if the quality of the channel if the quality of the supply of the product is smooth it's effective and it is reaching on time then it is going to be very fruitful to establish your good image in the market but if there are certain glitches in between lot of intermediaries are involved in it lot of chaos and con confusion as far as commission of getting the product is involved into it there is a possibility that you may lose your market image because retailer is not projecting you in a correct manner so if you want your retailer to project you in the correct manner give you certain space in the shelf right then you have to work on channel exclusivity or you have to work on reducing the unnecessary length of the channel international distribution channel can be direct or it can be indirect you can have your own exclusive outlets or you can go by direct uh, you can go by exporters or you can have some agents in the foreign country who will be selling your products there your own exclusive overseas shell, uh, sales agent there in the host country Next moving towards the another aspect of international marketing mix that is a communication strategy. So far we had talked about the product strategy, distribution strategy, now we are going to talk about the communication strategy. Here in this communication strategy we need to first handle the barriers of international communication. 
first we need to talk about the obstacles and the barriers or the hindrance which may come in the way of international communication like one is very important that is a cultural barrier second is the source and origin of a country just a few minutes before i give an example that japanese people don't like us product so japanese people consider japanese product as superior and if it is from us then they are going to consider it as inferior so they have to dilute their origin for making the product acceptable by the Japanese customer. Noise level that means the level of distortion or is going to arise when you will be launching your product into the host country because you are not clear about the political environment, you are not clear about the economical social culture. If you do not have done the complete study of the foreign market then there will be a noise, there will be a distortion, there will be a chaos in the market when you will be launching because you are not prepared with those kind of the problems which may arise which as you have not done the proper analysis of the external environment and the internal environment. There are certain push strategies, pull strategies and the push strategies. Push strategies are the personal selling. Like you might have seen some um, uh, medical representative going to the doctors in terms of make, making the doctor to understand about certain medicines, about certain medical devices. This kind of the uh, selling is known as personal selling. You are directly talking to the concerned person who are the final user of your product. Like a doctor is going to make use of the medical devices, doctor is going to prescribe certain medicines. So I as a medical representative of maybe CIPLA, I am going directly to the doctor and asking the doctor to sub, uh, sub, uh, prescribe those medicines which our company is manufacturing. So so this is what known as the push strategy whereas the on the other side is the pull, uh, pull strategy. Pull strategy is usually adopting the mode of media through broadcasting, through advertisements, through holdings and banner, through hiring brand ambassadors. You try to create the image in the market by advertising your product in the host market. So push uh, and the pull strategy it depends upon the product type and consumer sophistication. If the product type and the consumer satisfaction uh, sophistication is comparatively higher then what you will be going for? You will be going for the pull strategy because you do not need to make your customer aware about it. Your customer is already aware or if the product is already into the market then just by advertisement through broadcasting, holdings, banners you can easily create your market presence in the host market. But on the contrary side if the product is quite new in the market and your customer is not aware about your product product usability then you have to go for the push strategy. So when your product is new in the market in that case you should go for the push strategy because you have to create the understanding among the customer that how useful this product would be, how this product would match with your needs and your taste and preferences, how this is going to bring satisfaction, how this is going to bring in support in your day to day activities that kind of the understanding creation you need to have a push strategy. If the channel length is quite lengthy then always go for the pull strategy, if channel length is small then go for the push strategy. Product and technical standards, if the product and technical standards are so complicated, so complex then always advisable to go for the push strategy otherwise if the product and technical standards are nominal can be easily understood by just a booklet attached with this then it go for the pull strategy. If mass media is very active then go for pull strategy. If mass media is not going to play much role, go for the push strategy. You need to find the mix between pull and push, right? There may be situation where you need to find the both the things going to help you out. You have to execute the push strategy simultaneously the pull strategy. So you have to see what kind of the market present, what kind of positioning you are going to create in the market. On that basis you are going to find the blend or the trade off between a push and pull mix. Like in the global advertisement you need to find the standardized advertising, ad advertising adaptation or dealing with the country differences is going to actually help you out to which particular advertisement will going to pave your way. The kind of advertisement I used to show in my home country, will that be able to be acceptable by the developing countries? Will they be able to understand what I am trying to communicate with this advertisement? Because the mode of the communication in my home country coming from US to the India market may be English. So most of the people if I am going to target the rural people of a country, those who are com comparatively less uh, uh, conversant with the English language, they might feel difficulty in understanding those advertisements. 
advertisement. So you have to see whether I should go for standardized advertisement or I should go for the adapted advertisement or I should use some translation in between or translator in between to convert into the regional language and how I am going to deal with the country differences is also going to be the part of the pull and push mix and identifying the right blend of advertising so that you can communicate the correct brand to the customer and able to position your image in the market. Now after communication strategy, we are heading towards the next international marketing mix strategy that is the pricing strategy. Now under the pricing strategy, you are going to confront or face the discrimination. In X country, it is charging 10 rupees, in your country might be charging 15 rupees because of import and export duties charge upon it. So there will be a price discrimination for sure depending upon the import duty your government has imposed on certain commodity. If you are trying to import certain commodity which comes under the heavy import duty then you are going to pay extra amount for that certain luxurious product where there are more of GST. So they have to bear those GST and it will pass on to the ultimate customer. So price discrimination will be prevailing across the globe but you as a customer you as a manufacturer have to see if it is going to be beyond the affordability then how you are going to sustain. So such kind of the framing has to go in mind that as price discrimination will be there based on the country regularities, legal regulation for import and export, it is going to be there but still how I can minimize the effect of it. So for this, there is going to be the strategic pricing. Strategic pricing is going to be the predatory pricing. Predatory pricing is like when you, you try to enter into the market with some little prices and try to create your presence in the market. That is how you try to penetrate in the market by being predatory. Right, multi-point pricing that means at the same point you are into multiple countries so you are having different different pricing strategies. Right, experience curve pricing comes when you start enjoying economy of scale so you can lower down the price of your product as compared to the various competitors prevailing there in that host country. So in case of the strategic pricing you can adopt either the predatory pricing when the market is quite new so you try to enter into the market with little low cost. Second multi-point pricing that you can be in different markets at different different rates and different different charges you can get because of the you can take the advantage of the price differentiation available or the, the difference available in different country and you can enjoy that and can earn the profit whereas experience curve pricing is based on your economy of scale. If you have enjoyed economy of scale, you might reach to the expertise and excellency in the area. So ultimately you can reduce the cost and once the cost of production is going to get reduced, you can reduce the price also to be charged from the customer which is going to be very competitive or the cutthroat competition you can create for the host country competitors. Next is the regulatory influence on the pricing so that is competition pricing. If you are seeing a lot of competition is prevailing, you are going to lower down the price and after seeing you, your competitor is further going to lower down the price. So this is going to create a price war in the market. Price control, most of the commodities are there in the market which are controlled by the government, right? Go government has put a stake over it that there should be no variation and changes in the price of the commodity like petroleum product, the government is setting the price of it, right? Uh, and the, even the, uh, the exchange of the goods, gold, is the government has set the price for it. Next is the dumping. If dumping is happening in the country, right, some product is coming from the foreign market and they are dumping some obsolete technology or the used technology in that case, it can be sporadic dumping. Sporadic dumping is that you are charging less initially, right, you are, you, uh, you are selling the product on a throwaway price. Right, uh, which your, com your country, entire country couldn't imagine that you can get such product at such a lease price. That's sporadic. You are selling the product and it's a distress selling. It is also known as distress selling. Distress selling that is you are, they are selling the product at a throwaway price at a very low price, right, in order to overcome what is the product usually reached to the decline stage. So you try to sell the product in some developing or underdeveloped nation at a throwaway price so that whatever the money I can earn from this product at least be able to earn. Predatory pricing is initially keeping it low and then raising the bar. So initially you come with the low price and then after establishing the demand in the market, once the demand start rising, you raise the price also. Raise the price also. Up 
then you are going to increase the price of your commodity. Persistent dumping that means you are going to be consistent whatever the price you set you are going to continue with that same price the next time itself till you are surviving in that host country until unless new features are incorporated in that particular product. Right? So, these are some of the international marketing mix strategy which particular company has to adopt while taking a call of entering into the market when it comes to product you have to find out which particular I should go for when it comes to distribution there are different options of the distribution channel how I can improve the quality of the channel has to be a taken a call before when it comes to communication every different country is having their own communication style they have their own language all over the world there are about 6000 different languages so how I will be able to create my presence and existence in the market then that goes to the call for the understanding of push strategies or the pull strategy and then later we discuss about the pricing strategy which is very important because developing nations are very price sensitive. So if you are coming up with certain product which is very costly they might not be able to accept your pro product at a straight away right. So you have to understand when you are moving to a developing nation or under developed nation they are comparatively price sensitive then you have to adjust your price accordingly. Even China also the Chinese people the old Chinese people are very price sensitive they do not want to buy costly product at all. So, the old Chinese people if you are targeting old Chinese people the old uh, citizens of the China then you have to again think about the price of the pro product before entering into it. Now, let us look into certain factors influencing the pricing decision like the competition now this is like we are trying to conclude the entire session and trying to understand that what different factors are largely going to govern the pricing strategy first, first thing which comes in the mind is the level of the competition if competition is too high you cannot charge more they both are inversely proportional to each other if competition is high price should go down if competition is low price can raise up like in the previous slide I just told you that if there is a monopoly in the market right you are going to get the monopolistic position in the market then there is no need of identifying the demand or the price that you need not to find out the income elasticity of the demand right you are going to gain the uh, the presence you are going to gain the presence in the market because you are the whole soul you are the whole person who is going to offer the product you just need to know the income level of the people right you do not need to know whether what should be the price of the product in that host market right so competition and price both are inversely proportional to each other if competition is going up then the price will go down that means there are lot of competitors are there that means they are offering more product quite similar to your customers bargaining power is going to increase if customer bargaining power is going to increase you have to reduce the power to make your product attractive to the customers purchasing power of the customer for sure is an important point and essential point to be taken into consideration as purchasing power is uh, driving uh, is coming from per capita income of the nation if per capita income of a nation is good their purchasing power is for sure going to be good. So, developed nation usually have more purchasing power as compared to the developing and underdeveloped nation. So, you have to find out what should be the price of your product when you are targeting the developing nation because now people are finding the developing nation more emerging market it is a market of low cost of production so it is a market where the, uh, the other resources are comparatively at available at a cheaper rate. So, let us take the advantage of availability of those cheaper rate of the product so that you can have more uh, presence in the market so that you can have more acceptance in the host country market by having a correct pricing strategy. Next is the buyer's behavior right different buyers have different behavior they tend to show their importance maybe this behavior of the buyer may be derived from the culture of the uh, culture they follow the religion they follow the belief or system the people are having. So, every individual buyer in a particular country is to be identified and on the basis of their behavior you are going to set the market that means you are going to have a segmentation of the market on the basis of the behavior of the buyer. So, largely it is assumed that youth uh, behave in a similar pattern, infants behave in a similar pattern, kids or adolescent behave in this pattern, age old people behave in this pattern, adults newly married couple behave in this pattern right. So, uh, there, there you are going to form the group of the buyer on the basis of the behavior so that you can develop the homogeneity in the market in such a heterogeneous environment. So, for this reason you need to identify the buyer's behavior and on the basis of the buyer's behavior you, will, you are going to form the market 
एक सेगमेंट एंड ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ द सेगमेंट एंड देयर पेइंग कैपेसिटी देयर पर कैपिटल इनकम देयर परचेजिंग पावर यू आर गोइंग टू टेक द प्राइजिंग डिसीजन नेक्स्ट इज द फॉरन एक्सचेंज फ्लक्चुएशन राइट दैट्स दैट गोज विदाउट सेइंग इफ द फॉरन एक्सचेंज मार्केट यू आर डीलिंग व्हेन यू आर डीलिंग इन द फॉरन market you are for sure dealing in the foreign exchange right you will there will be a transaction and from one currency to another currency if you are confined to the domestic country that means there is no international marketing so you when you are heading you are stepping from your home country to the host country international marketing is going to take place and when international marketing is going to take place you are going to get affected by the foreign exchange fluctuations you are going to get affected by the change in the currency value in the world market and in the previous lecture we get to know the currency valuation get changes on the basis of the market forces what are the market forces market forces are your demand and supply right so if there is a huge demand of your currency in the market for sure your convertibility charges are going to be low because you are lot you you people are demanding for you maximum and you are carrying a us dollar your people are demanding for it so we are going to charge you very less we are going to charge you rather zero because you are having a significant power in the market when it comes to indian currency indian currency is not that much demanded as compared to the us dollar however there was a day in the 1947 when when one us dollar equal to one indian rupee but now the situation is one us dollar is equal to 74 rupees approximately so you have devalued your currency because you want to maintain certain level of the export you have to overcome the problem of the deficit that is a different story but you are going to get affected you because you have to bear extra convertibility charges for converting your indian currency into us dollar so you will be paying extra as you are being extra you will be charging extra from your customer right so for that also you need to know the pricing strategy so uh, i hope today's lecture is clear to all of you let's quickly review the different topics that we had discussed we try to understand the international marketing aspect in the international marketing aspect one first thing which we try to find out the market selection strategies right right we try to find out what all six steps a person need to undergo in order to select a particular market right what are the different product strategies what are the distribution strategy communication strategy pricing strategy and what are the factors affecting the pricing strategy have been covered in today's lecture for preparing this today's lecture i refer to these different books and i hope today's lecture is clear to all of you thank you so much all the best